And now, from Fiji, the queen of Wunder music. She is simply known as Liza Vulakoro. Here's Liza. Thank you. I'd like to one more of my original hits uh, back home. Fiji and the Wunder song, it's called Maramaniadate. I thought it's a little island where my brother and I come from. They don't normally mark it on the map because it's so small they forget. So anyway, we try and uh, put it on the map and make this song and everybody knows about my island. It's called Maramaniadate. <laughs> Laisa Vulakoro is one of Fiji's most famous singer and songwriter. With a musical career spanning almost 40 years and over 17 albums under her name, she has become a household name. But her journey hasn't always been rosy and Lisa has had to overcome many hurdles and challenges, including the devastating impact of COVID-19 on musicians and the music industry. In this documentary, Lisa tells the story of her upbringing, her tough rise to the top of Fiji's music industry, surviving cancer despite being given only a 50% chance of survival, and how she and her fellow musicians survived three waves of the deadly COVID-19 pandemic, singing and surviving to the very end. Yes, well, I was born and raised in Yadata village in the Kondrobe, a uh, little island off Taviuni, uh, between Taviuni and Vunombalavu to be exact. Coming to Suva was uh, like a big thing for me because uh, I, somehow when I was growing up, all I wanted to become is to become a singer. And my father used to tell me, look, you're a very clever girl. You are the cleverest girl from this island. You should become a lawyer or do something that you can work for the government because I know you're very smart. And I said, no, I want to be a singer. I want to be a star someday. And my father said, what is that? Nobody knew what a star was, you know. I just looked up to the sky and I said, there's a star up there, that's where I want to go. And that's what I tell all my teachers at school, in primary and Yadata, and my classmates and all my, all my cousins. So when they were asked, they said, I want to be a nurse, I want to be a doctor. I said, I want to be a singer, I want to be a star. Nobody understood it. I didn't either. I just thought, that's it, I want to go there. And this island is too small for me. So I nagged my dad to bring me to Suva, to send me to Suva. So I came to Suva and did class eight. Uh, normally you come to do form three, but because I was nagging him so much, he said, just put me on the boat, tell the crew, it's my daughter, somebody will wait at the wharf. So coming on that boat trip, it was very significant for me because when we got to the city, it was dusk, it was getting daylight, not dusk, uh, dawn. And I could see the big city lights from the boat. And for me, it signified my whole life is going for those bright lights. Only later on in life then I realized what it was really. Because um, uh, it became my work place, was the lights. On stage was lights. When I tour all around the world, like whether I'm in New York or LA or London, I always ask the people that I stay with, please, I want to take a ride around the cities just to see the city lights. So those, it reminded me of the, my first day when I came into the Suva city, looking from the boat. Eh? So, I mean, I knew what I wanted. I knew that I wanted to become a singer. And uh, nobody was going to stop me. And uh, 40 years, over 40 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> still doing what I love. and. Uh, and nobody or any, anything can stop me. <laughs> People say, when are you going to retire? I said, what's that? <laughs> well, uh, there are so many different uh, expressions you can say about the lights, but it was my life getting going from school to school uh, from my first job when I first left school it was like 
I didn't want to leave school, but no one could pay my school fees. And uh, I stayed with relatives. My sister brought me up in town. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's no bus fare to go to school. I lived in Raiwai with them. And I would walk from Raiwai, I would walk up to Milverton Road, Rewa Street, shortcut from Flagstaff to Dudley. And then I'd walk back. And then some days when there's no lunch, but you know, those were some of the challenges going from the island to Suva and facing all that. First day at school, no shoes, barefoot, and I had to borrow uniforms from my cousins, uh, and they were small because I was a bit taller than them. And uh, no school bag, you had to take plastics, and that's how I started, you know. So, and then later on, in the mercy of all my other relatives who were working, they were able to pay my school fees and also able to give me clothes and to buy some new uniforms. But I was never discouraged because I know that uh, uh, I have a destiny to achieve, to get there, especially in my music. And I was focused. My focus was getting to do what I love, and that's music. My songs that I've written over the years and have become big hits was mainly from my experience uh, about uh, lifestyle, fishing, you know, all different kinds of plants and fruits and animals and fish and people, wherever I am, I'm influenced by my surroundings and this is what I write about. In 2008, I was diagnosed with brain tumor, and uh, my mind was going all over the place, you know. No matter what will happen, I'm not going to die from this, no way. So when the doctor looked at my scan, I had to have another MRI there, looked at the images and said, you have a 50-50 chance of surviving this operation. This, this tumor is so big. And I just looked at him and I said, Doctor, death is not an option. Not an option. You do your job, operate on me, heal me. I have to get better to carry my son. He gave me this child at 47 and a half. He can't take my life now, he can't. He has to give me back my strength to look after him. I didn't ask for him, it's my gift. He gifted him to me. So, do your job. I'm gonna get better. I think growing up in the island, in the village, uh, you know, it was I was just a natural. So, I was just grateful that I was always healthy and I, I never smoked and uh, never did drugs. And uh, I was not really into those things because most times it was just sports, you know? And I had to always keep my healthy lifestyle. I played rugby, you know, for the Fiji Women's League, the first Fiji Women's Rugby League team, I was in that team. I played rugby union, I played tennis, I played squash. I was always very sporty. I like to play all different kinds of sports. I started my exercise when I first started to walk. I couldn't walk after my operation. I walk like this. My ex-husband is to stand behind me and make sure I don't fall like that. So he'll make me walk. I insisted that I walk. Take me. I need to walk because I used to do this before I got sick. If you lose your health, you lose your life. That's it. Finito. Huh? Life, your health is so important and taking care of your health. And I was grateful to my ex-husband because he was very good. He really looked after me and took care of me, although he left me too, but he left me when I was better. <laughs> so 2017, I got my divorce and uh, we decided, okay, he will still do child support. 
So the which was good. Child support was coming. We separated in 2012, officially separated. We paid off this place in 2011. All the money was paid off to the bank. The two acres, this one and that one, and then my lease then I pay every year. And then when everything, when we got divorced, it was hard. Going through a divorce alone is hard, you know. And uh, um, so he was sending child support every month and uh, that was helping us a lot. And, and you know me, I help the village, I help everybody in my family, uh, everything, you name it. So, but I was still singing and earning income from singing and my band, I still had my band, I've always had my band. And um, so 2020, when the COVID hit, all of a sudden, in last April was the last payment of child support, which he was, he was sending us 1,100, sometimes 1,200 a month. So when COVID hit, all that stopped. And COVID hit, all my bookings was canceled. Everything was canceled and there was no more gathering, which what is part and parcel of our job. So all that was done. So then I have the Ben boys who depend on me and uh, bills to pay. I have a little space in town, my office, you know, like a studio and uh, that I paid rent to. So all that stopped. And I was thinking to myself, wow, my goodness, it, we were going through a really hard time. And I was grateful because we had that time banana trees and then, you know, we had row row and everything outside we could eat from. And we had the fish pond down there, which was going that we could get fish. So during the lockdown, most of the people in the community were asking for fish. So they come and dig, they come and fish, they bring their lines. So I also tell some of the gang, bring your cane knives. Yeah, we have to tell them to work for it, They're not just free all the time, you know. But the thing was, there was no money for fuel, because my car, sometimes we park the car and my son and I would catch the bus, like we had uh, bus cards. Or, you know, just hitch a hike with the neighbors. And um, so it was really hard. And then imagine my band boys, who too have to pay rent where they live. They didn't have anything. My name is Wes Imi. I'm from uh, Nembita Wanimboka Telebu and my mom is from Verata Naloto Telebu. Well, I'm a musician and uh, I work in the resorts and we are just one of those who have been affected by COVID-19. You know, life must go on, you know, you know, somewhere, somehow, I have to pay the rent, feed the kids. I had to move on with my life because I'm living in Ronga and I'm renting me and my two kids. Actually, I'm a single parent, you know. I have to go on. I can't afford to let this situation get over me or control me. So I told myself, that's it. I have been planning to subdivide one of those blocks. Subdivide it and sell the blocks. So the, this is number four. This has been bought. This one, all that, up to there. They take this. This is the access road we built. This block, it's straight from that tree, goes this way. And I had some loan in the bank because I helped the village store and uh, so many other things I helped in. I can't really tell you everything, just some of it. <laughs> so I was left with a lot of loan that I'm, I was paying off in the bank and that money was going towards that, the one that my ex-husband was sending going right there and then the rest we were living on and also paying the bills. So what do you do when this happens? You have to start looking within yourself. How are you going to survive? I have properties, yes. So when you have the assets, you start thinking, I don't need that block, so I have to subdivide it and just sell it. You know, sell it so I can earn some income and maybe I can also support my other band members that need help and they also have children because there's nothing at all for musicians nothing at all if you don't have and most of them live in the town they don't have any land to plant on at least I have the land I can plant so that's what happened 
I sub started subdividing, going everywhere, doing everything. You know how hard it is. But I just go out there and just shake everybody. Come on, do this, do this. I have to do this. So by end of the year last year, and it was like November, December last year, I sold the first block. Half of the money I paid off the loan and half we were living on it. And then I was supporting the band members as well. They were getting their allowances from me, um, especially the two that, the two core ones that I know they really needed help. Eh? So, and then um, Wes, who was also out of work, he was playing at uh, Outriga and uh, Intercon, so he's also got no job with the uh, two kids who, during the lockdown, I went over and picked them up to bring them here this year. So they can at least help me in the garden and, and they can, they have food to eat. She promised me that she was going to bring me and she asked me, hey, how are you doing? I said, I'm okay. I'm holding on to dear life. As long as I'm moving forward, I'm okay. And then she said, okay, don't worry, I'll bring you over. And I told Lisa, Lisa, see, I'm here, I'm not doing anything at all. And I miss my music, I miss work, you know, I miss my friends, I miss all my workmates. And uh, I've seen them being affected so badly too by the COVID-19. And uh, some of them were actually stuck. But uh, that's where I gained my strength from, you know. And I decided to move forward. When Lester called me, I took it as an opportunity. Um, at least I could sit with her, sing and play music to draw my attention to something different rather than focusing on the stress of all these things, you know. I'm grateful to God for giving me that kind of uh, heart and initiative uh, because he knows I have the means and I have the heart to do things, to make things happen. Like I said, we are happening people in the, in the music industry, we're happening. So we make it happen and uh, support everybody who, are, who needs my support. And that's how we've been going all this time. We would, I was like, Wes, bring your, bring your keyboard and bring your children. When the Lisa told me that uh, we were, she was gonna come over and bring us, my kids, they were actually looking forward. For the past two weeks, ever since she promised me that she was gonna bring me over, my two children kept on asking me, when is Auntie Lisa gonna come and pick us up? When is she going to come and pick us up? And then finally one morning, Lisa called me. Hey, my Lisa called me and then my daughter answered the phone. She said, hey, uh, Daddy, uh, Auntie Lisa called. She said she's gonna come and pick us up. I said, okay, let's pack, let's get ready. And so we came here and Wes and I would sit outside here and do virtual concerts because I can't go to Suva and just doing virtual concerts from here. So people were donating from all over the world and I'm grateful to all the people. My friends, some of them are not my friends, but friends on Facebook and, and everyone from whoever around Fiji, we were getting a lot of support from people. To me, it was a new thing to me, you know? While everybody was doing it, to me it was very new because my keyboard was busy sleeping at home, doing nothing. You know, when I could have used it, you know, in order to gain, I went around a few of these musicians, asked them for us to do a virtual concert, but they had their own thing going. But when Kilaisa invited me to come over, the very first night I came here, we did a virtual concert. And I was pretty surprised by the response and how much uh, money we managed to collect just for two hours. Mm -mm. Just for two hours, I managed to uh, look after my family, feed them, pay the rent, till today.
not only West was the one I used. There's some other boys from around here, Save, who lives up the road. I was using him because he could play the guitar as well. And uh, Barry would come from Nandi, my guitarist, who lives in Nandi. And we would sit inside there and do some virtual concerts as well, sometimes out here. So it was helping with everyone, you know. And uh, just have to push that button and, and do it, you know. People are looking at COVID-19. No, you have to look beyond COVID-19, you know. Look at who you are, what you can do, you know. Uh, I think the biggest problem today is when we sit down. People sit down a lot and wait for assistance. No, you have to go out there. If you're a man, you have to hunt. Hunt in a good way. If you're a man, you know. As for me, you know, I'm not, uh, my boundaries are not limited to certain things, no. Even sometimes I come home, I come here, I do the cleaning up, I do the washing, anything. Anything that's got to keep me moving forward and keep my mind fresh, keep me thinking, thinking about good things, positive things. I jump to the farm, I go and do the planting, I do the farm planting, plant cassava, plant dalo. Now you can see behind me here. See, anything that's got to do with me moving forward, I do it. I think um, we really, you know, the answer is within you, within yourself. You know, you can, with God's guidance, you ask God for guidance. Like when I was in my head, my, you know, I know God spoke to me, subdivide your land and said it. He's sitting idle. I don't share this, you know. I, I'm a person that holds my cards close to my chest. And um, only those who know me, they'll come and help me. They know what I go through. And I also have a loving uh, community back in Nandronga. Those all my friends from Hana Hana village. Uh, they normally come around and tell me, where's whenever you want cassava there? There's cassava in the plantation. And also my son goes out diving. I used to go out diving before, but then I decided to stop. And that's how I managed to survive my, uh, that's how I managed to survive daily. Now that everything is open up again, we are getting bookings. Like every week we're booked up till December and I'm thinking wow you know it's so nice you know everybody is getting and what I miss the most is performing to an audience <laughs> that's what I miss the most is performing getting on stage and and looking at the faces of the people making people happy that way because virtual is nice but it's hard I can't see my audience really you know and uh, uh, you need that interaction like when you're doing live the interaction is always helps boost your energy and you bounce off each other's energies so that's what i really missed so now what i'm doing is i'm just calling all my friends who have companies why you want me to come and boost the morale of your stuff just let me know i'm coming so we've done the um ground the shipping whole of the 12 ships all the stuff in one of their boats, number I think it was number 12. We sat there and we performed for them. It was so nice. It was one of our first performances after the lockdown. So uh, George Gander called me and I said, we're coming, don't worry, we'll play. I, I didn't want to charge or anything. Whatever you're gonna give, just give the bus fare for my boys. We're doing one small one for all the staff at uh, SPCA people that look after animals. So we're gonna go there and perform there just to to uh, make the staff happy. Even the animals are gonna be happy too because <laughs> we'll be performing there. <laughs> the whole month of Pinktober was me going around uh, with my band, just a few guys and me and the girls and just performing while I, I, I'm invited to be the guest speaker talking about my survival uh, from cancer and journey and also to perform for those that come to listen and hear our stories and yeah that was a big boost coming straight into pink toba uh, after the lockdown it was great i really really appreciated it it gives me another new energy another new you know boost of energy to carry on going because life is still good and it's too short so let's make the most of what we have and utilize your, your talent and your energy to support yourself and your family and others who need your support. First I was afraid, I was petrified, kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. But then 
and I spent so many nights thinking how you do me wrong, and I grew strong. Good to have the headphones. And I learned how to get along, and now you're back. I just walked in to find you here with that sad look upon your face. Should have changed that stupid lock. Should have made you leave your key. And not for just one second, you'll be back to bother me. Survive. I will survive. Hey, go on now.